The, a very popular interviewer question was, what is the next color? We're not going to call this record fuchsia or... No. Lavender. Whatever all the jokes were. Taupe. Sepia. I was, I was going for like the ones you can't see, like infrared. Mauve. Turquoise. But no. Ultraviolet. Salmon salmon. gone back through our history and just seen different eras of the band categorized by the the album titles the ep era was like the first second and what we call it 30p third when we first signed three laps the idea was what if we had enough foresight to stick with a, an album titling theme with enough time and enough commitment we could run through the rainbow of colors and those would be suitable titles for our albums so after we'd done yellow and green i was like all right that's enough of that you know and then crash Fast forward, new band, new record. So many things are gonna be different. This is how people identify our album covers. So that's what we're doing. Then it was like, all right, well, in the, in the rainbow, in the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple sounded cool. There's something regal to it. There's something very human to it. You know, purple's close to red, close to blue. So purple it is. We're gonna stick with the female characters that are present on all of our records. Well, one thing that really hasn't happened on our album covers in the past, the figures haven't interacted in a direct way with one another. Maybe because we've figured out what our message is a little bit more, maybe the confrontation on the album cover should be more direct. The women, the characters, and the animals are sort of covered in this disgusting ooze of medications. And so there's like this sexual energy that's kind of like around them, but it's not them, you know? <laughs> it's everything else. It's the birds and the bees and the dogs. The Hound has a lot of historical context. There's the like perverse, sexual, lascivious side of them, the way we call people hound dogs. Or But then there's a side to them that is dedicated and concentrated on tracking something. The very stereotypically British nature of them and the, you know, the fact that we were injured in England, that also became a thing. So there's elements of you know, the English thing. One of the ladies is you know, holding in her hand these sort of multi-form rose. It's just sort of a reinterpretation of the Tudor rose, which was, again, a, a British thing. And with our record covers, I always like to use images that are, they, that are pertinent. The more it disturbs me, the closer I think I am to like, getting into my subconscious and getting something unique out. The vast majority of this record, lyrically speaking, it, you know, is a result of the accident that we went through. Immediately after the accident, I was hospitalized and I was in the acute orthopedic trauma ward of Royal United Hospital in Bath. And I spent a couple weeks living very statically in a, in a bed. The easy way to envision the idea of being attached to something from which you can't break free was, you know, it's a rope. It stands for being subdued and suppressed and incapacitated. One of the things that just was kind of a, a torturous reality of that existence at that time was there's this gigantic window at the end of the room we were staying in, which looked out over this beautiful, lush, rolling English countryside. There was these hawks. They were just constantly out there, just like spinning these huge circles around the top of this field. You know, it was really quite beautiful. But to me, they were freedom from pain and freedom from trauma that I didn't have. Well, I got out of the hospital and then stuck in a basically the basement of this apartment building. And it took a couple weeks till I was physically in the shape where we could get me and into a wheelchair and then out into the real world. And because this was Bath, England, they very much kept Bath as original as possible. So it's all cobblestones, everything. The sidewalks are cobblestones, the roads are cobblestones. And then I get this like moment of freedom. I'm in a wheelchair and I'm just like, take me to the park. It's just like, go, go, go. And we got to the park and I look up and it's like, that hawk again. It's like somewhere totally different, probably a different hawk, but to me it's the same one and he's like tormenting me with his free wheeling attitude and flying all over the place. That's when my obsession with hawks really began. Flash forward like, you know, a couple years and I've seemingly gotten over this hawk obsession. I've taken up running again. You know, I'm just running down this road and all of a sudden I see this red-tailed hawk just kind of comes out from underneath the bridge, swoops down, he's like about at my eye level, and he just squares up, he's coming straight at me, and does this like kind of 360 thing, flies straight up in the air, and he lands in the, in the grass. But he's still fixated on me, because I'm fixated on him. So I stopped. The non-rational part of my brain starts thinking, okay, you're, you're now having a spiritual moment, which I don't prescribe to in any way, shape, or form. So it's odd for me. He lands in the leaves and he's looking at me, and I'm looking back at him, and I'm thinking like, what, are you gonna talk to me? Or like, are we about to have telepathy? Or are you some sort of god that's gonna 
reveals something to me. And he picks up off the ground and there's a fucking rodent in his claws. And I'm like, oh, you weren't teaching me a message. You were getting dinner. And I was happy that what I thought was potentially something spiritual and different and game-changing for me was actually just the natural world being the natural world. And so I put my earbuds back in and I ran home. There's a hawk on the record cover and that's why. I still believe in records and big pictures. There's got to be synchronicity between album cover and lyrics and musical themes. The whole struggle is to tackle deep, personal, dark, intimate things in such a way that they're not excluding people. It's neither hopeless nor is it entirely hopeful. It's somewhere in between. We're dealing with that gray area in between black and white.